Welcome to the Plenty Devlog. Today we're joined by a special guest, Stephanie, and we're continuing on our series of just building out the Plenty CMS, which is a get back CMS that sits in the front of Plenty. It's a way to edit websites, static websites, without needing a server in the middle. So you can basically just deploy a Plenty site to something like GitLab Pages, and then you have a CMS that writes back to GitLab Pages, and it's a really easy and cheap way to, to manage your uh, CMS. So uh, today I want to have Stephanie on to take a look at some of the media capabilities that we're building out and ask questions and, and think through some stuff. How does that sound, Steph? That sounds awesome. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see like a basic plenty site here where it says contact me? Mm hmm Okay. So this is a just a this is the default starter for plenty. And I've uh, just spun it up here to take a look at some of this. So I've spun it up and have logged in already. So you see this admin toolbar at the top. This is the default admin toolbar. We've gone through some of this before. So if you click on edit, you can see that you can come here and change, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then um, over here, we're adding a new media browser. So if I click this, you can see here that we have now uh, a media browser that's <laughs> starting to pop up here. So this is displaying a grid of images. And let me just pull up my folder here, this folder here. And so this is, so you, yeah, yeah. this up? is your assets folder, right? Exactly. So, yep. And right here on this left-hand side that I'm shaking around, this is just my, uh, the media browser for my computer. This has nothing to do with the website. And I just want to show what this looks like. So you can see we're on the desktop and there's a project here called BBB. That's our, our website. And then in BBB there's assets, right? So right now, a plenty site looks like this, right? Assets, content, layout, and these different files. Um, we're going to look in the assets folder specifically because this is where all the media is uh, being hosted. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So what it's doing is what the site is attempting to do is basically you hold your media here in any way that you want to organize it. So I've put some folders in here. I've put some files at the top level. You can do a lot of different things, but what it's attempting to do here is once you open up your media tab, it's going through and it's trying to pull those different pieces of information in there. So uh, by default, it should show all the end files. So you can see here we have two, no, we have four files at the top level, right? We have this picture of us. Um, we have a picture from our last Jamstack Boston meetup. Then we have the logo for Plentico. And then we have a test PDF that I just downloaded from the internet. And uh, you can notice over here in the browser, there's additional pictures, right? So there's this bike picture, there's some cat pictures. So those are nested in nested folders here. So cats are here. Uh, test has this form assembly picture of some a project that I was working on for some clients. And then nested in there is bike. So you can see all these pictures are all pulled up to the front level. So basically what it does is it comes through here and it traverses all your files, no matter how deeply nested they are, and it puts them in a browser here. So that's like step number one. Another thing it's doing is it's handling a couple of different file types. Right now it's just images and PDF. So you know, image like JPEGs and PNGs, these render differently than like a PDF. So it actually is going through here and it's giving you a little preview of your PDF and it's also pulling out the images at the top level. And then what it's also doing here is it's taking all your folders and it's adding these as filters at the top, right? So we have cats, dogs, and test. You can see cats, dogs, and tests at the top here. And then in test, there's another folder called nested and it also pulls that up. So take any folders, no matter how nested they are and give you a filter at the top here. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really cool. So if you want to narrow down these results, because you know right now it's pretty easy to look at uh, what is this, eight, eight files, that's pretty easy. But if you have you know hundreds or thousands of files here, you may want to be able to, to drill down into these. So for instance, I could click on cats and it'll show me just the cats folder. And you can see over here, that'd be the equivalent to going over here and clicking into cats, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then from here, you'll once you have one of these um, Filters enabled, you, you'll get this option to close out. So I can click close to close out of cats. I could also come here and I can toggle on and off by just clicking cats again. Now, um, I want to demonstrate something here. So we have a folder called dogs. Dogs is empty. So if I were to come here, by default, it shows everything. If I click dogs, it's going to show that I have no information in there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, filters are also additive. So if we have cats, for instance, and then we want... Um, to also find information in the nested folder, that would be the bike here. We can click on nested as well, and it'll show all the pieces of information there. Um, then we can toggle one on or off, or we can to toggle the other ones on or off like this. And then we can clear them all by clicking the clear all uh, button. Um, 
another thing that's kind of interesting is so some of these folders contain other files, right? So test contains, let's see here, test contains this form assembly image and also contains the nested bike, right? So if we click on test, mm -hmm. we'll get both of those. Now, if we were to add an additional filter of a nested, which is nested within test, it doesn't go and add it again. So previously there was a little bug where this would add the bike picture again and it would have it duplicated. But we, we go through and we actually pull out all the duplicates so you don't get that. But you, you know, you can still, mm. you can still uh, add additional filters here. Also, um, you'll notice that like by default, all these images are showing. And if you click dogs, it doesn't, it, you know, gets rid of all of them to show that folder's empty, but it won't empty out your folders if you have some other ones. So for instance, we have test and cats enabled. If we click dogs, it's additive at this point, right? So it's saying, are there any additional files in the dogs? No, there's not. So it's not going to remove all these. Um, so basically, you know, a file can exist in two folders at one time, right? So um, if we're in assets, uh, you know, this cat, this cloud.jpg uh, can't also exist over here unless it's a duplicate file, right? So um, what we're doing is we make it additive in that sense. If that makes sense. Yeah. Does this seem like it's kind of useful in order to, to go through here and browse some files? Is it, are there things that are jumping out to you when you look at this for the first time that make this difficult or confusing? Yeah, no, I, I really like it. It's uh, very intuitive and very easy. Um, I guess my question would be, is it is it only going to pull the assets, assets that are relevant to the page you're on, or, or is that going to pull everything from the site? It seems everything from the site, right? Yeah, so there's a couple of different things that are happening here. So this is the overall media browser here by clicking on this media. Now this will pull all the assets throughout the site. And this this um, interface, it's kind of funny because you're thinking like, well, I can go and I can find my files, but like, what am I actually doing with these, right? So um, for managing the media through this, all you're really doing uh, is a couple of things and you can't do them yet. So one is you need an ability to remove media. So that's pretty self-explanatory, right? So these will probably have some kind of little hover over icon as you hover over them with like an X or something like that. And when you click on the X, you probably get a, a confirmation saying, do you want to delete this media from your site? So you'll have the ability to delete media from your site. Another thing you're going to be able to do is add new media to your site. So there's probably a section above these filters here where there's a, a way to upload files from your desktop. Um, so, so we'll create a field like that and that will be able to add new media to your site and that will save back to Git and rebuild your site that way. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's cool. I can add and remove media, but it's not really giving me a useful interface for adding this media to an actual page, right? Like it's not interacting with the pages specifically. It's just a repository of media that will update this folder, but it's not super useful unless it's actually being implemented on the site, right? So mm -hmm. I think, you know, for that, there's a couple of things. I, I would like to have a section here to, to copy the address. So for instance, you can, you can X out of any one of these to delete them. You should also be able to copy the file address for them. And that will replicate something like, let me see if I can... Um, duplicate this and let's do assets. You can see like the file browser here, right? And we go to test uh, PDF. So something like that. So this, this file URL here, um, you should be able to click on the image and get that URL there. And then you could do something like, so let me copy this. And um, we don't actually have any display of images on our site. So unfortunately um, we're not gonna be able to render it. So, you know, for instance, you have to actually have your uh, markup rendering an image. We don't have anywhere where our markup's rendering an image right now, so I can't really demonstrate it. But assuming there is something like that. Code? What's up? Could you add it to the code? Or no? So you okay, could. So you, so you could add it like this. You could add it to your, your content source, but there's nothing in my HTML that's rendering the title as an image, right? So I, I, I could go through. Mm. I mean, I could add something like that real quick, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not going to bother. But for instance, so okay. you should be able to click on one of these, copy that URL, and then be able to paste it into a place. Now, that only helps you some of the time, because I think for the most part, people are going to want to be in, uh, interacting with media uh, from a standpoint of like visual, like being able to click upload uh, a new file or browse existing files and then have that work automatically instead of copying paths to files and putting them in text fields. That's not probably the ideal workflow. So um, it's getting a little ahead of myself, but basically what's going to happen is if you have a content source that looks like this, we are going to do some regular expressions to check that you are starting with the assets folder. And again, there's a little trickiness here because we have to account for base URLs. If, you're, if your site is using a base URL, you'll probably have something like this because that's the way base URLs work. But if not, you might have something like this. So you know, we'll check for that kind of pattern in the beginning and also make sure that our string ends with a dot file and we can specify certain file 
types there. Now, if we see one of those paths, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a file uploading widget, uh, file uploading slash browsing widget. So you'll be able to you know, upload a new file that will then render on the page, assuming that your HTML accommodates it, that's on you. Um, or you'll get a pop-up of the browser and you can click and automatically transfer it that way instead of copying a path and putting it in there. So that's kind of the ultimate goal. It's gonna work something uh, similar to, let me take a look here. Um, for instance, we have these uh, blog pages that have date widgets. So you can see how this date widget works and that updates this date here, right, as you click through. Um, mm -hmm. And it supports different formats. But what's happening here is it's actually just taking your date string and it's recognizing that this is a date. So we're gonna also recognize that things are, are um, files and will allow you to have the file browser work that way. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's a little hard to visualize. I'm hoping that's kind of like the next phase of this to to kind of get that workflow working. And hopefully it'll make a lot more sense when, when you see it. Um, another couple of things I wanted to mention with the media, I think, um, you know, having the upload is good. I, I was thinking about potentially, and these are, I'm not sure where I'm landing on these, so don't get too excited about these features. But um, I was thinking about maybe pulling out the file type. So we have some JPEGs, we have some PNGs, we have some PDFs right now. And then having filters, additional filters for those different file types, so you can narrow down by file type. Um, mm. I was also thinking about doing a simple search so you could search file names. So if you know yeah. you have something in here called cloud.jpg, that's one of our cats, or comet, um, you could go through and you could start searching cloud or comet, and then that would appear as well. And then you should be able to combine these. You could say, well, I know it's somewhere in cats, and I know it starts with a C, and you could start filtering that way. So these are all the things I'm thinking about um, implementing mm. as well to make this process a little easier. Yeah, yeah, that'd be very, very helpful, especially with larger sites with a lot of media. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This <clears throat> it gets quite overwhelming pretty fast. So this is easy to look at here, but you have to think about larger data sets. Um, and that's that's kind of where we're going with that. Yeah, I love it. Cool. It's great. It's great progress. Thanks. Um, I stop. Oops, I stopped my camera. I want to stop my screen share. And am I back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's all I really want to go over. Do you have any questions about some of the stuff that I'm working on there or anything else that you want to comment on? Um, so just to, just to clarify what you were saying, um, you're hoping that the user can click on the image and get a file address and then they could add that to the edit. Is that what like the edit part of the, um, I don't yeah. know what you'd call that, but yeah. yeah. Let's take one more look, just, just real quick. So mm -hmm. if I were editing, <clears throat> um, let's see here. So uh, let's see if I can do this in a way that makes sense. Um, so there's a type of field, input field, uh, and I don't know if I can do this like this, and I'm not sure if I even know the, so there's an input field called file maybe? Um, I, I'm not a, uh, that's a label. Oops. I need it on my input. Sorry. I'm editing my HTML. I'm seeing if I can just visually represent this real quick. Oh, my input. Okay. Do you see how this widget here? Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is uh, if you have a content source here that looks, that can be matched in a way that knows it's an asset, um, Yes, this is clearly an asset. We know by the fact that it starts this way and ends with a file yeah. name that is an asset file, right? If we have mm -hmm. something like that, and of course I lost my, my thing here, but if we have something like that, we're going to go to our input and it's going to automatically change this to type file. And then you'll be able to do this. And when you click on this, you'll see a pop-up on your computer to go through and start picking files on your computer where you could like add images that you save locally, right? This is my, my computer file, file browser. Um, and then if, uh, if you save a file like that, not only is it going to get written, uh, it's gonna get written to JSON, that the new path, whatever the path is, you know, now it'd be like new file from computer, right? Mm -hmm. so this, this path gets updated um, in your content source, and it also gets written in Git and saved back to your repository so you can rebuild your site and render it. Um, but also that that gets rendered, on, assuming that this field here, instead of being in H1, which it is now, it's just a header, this will be like an image field, right? And it can actually render it. So you could do something like, oh, let me, like, you know, we could almost like, we could almost visualize this. Let's, uh, 
let's do this real quick. Let's do, so we have assets over here, right? And we have cats and we have cloud. So we can grab this URL like this. Um, and then we could do something like this. So instead of an H1, and this is something that you have to do because we don't determine what your markup looks like at all, right? All we determine is, uh, you know, bringing your data from, from data source to, to markup, but you have to accommodate it. So assuming you put something like an image tag in here, you'd have a source, and then you'd feed that value into your image tag like this, and then it would render over here like this, right? So mm -hmm. it, would, it would show the cat. So, so, okay, so you start with your content source looking like this. We, our discoverable CMS automatically picks it up. It gives you a file widget, which we just, we've looked at several times now, but the file widget being, um, you know, type file uh, equals file. And then when your type is file, then you can use that to upload. And then that saves to JSON and you get something rendered like this, assuming your HTML accommodates it. Now that's only half the solution. The other half is the file browser. So this field will not only be a file upload widget, but it'll also be a browser. Mm -hmm. So you, you'll open up your browser and <clears throat> um, visually, I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna look, but essentially what you do is you click on this, you say, oh, I wanna browse a file instead of uploading one. And then you, you could say, okay, I already have this cat file over here. And you could click on this directly and that would save the content source and would render over here, assuming your HTML accommodates it. Does that make sense? So you do you do it all over here. Um, okay, so you would use that in um, like in addition to to this edit. Yeah, it, here they might they might look kind of similar. So what? And and maybe there's got to be a, a helpful way to distinguish it. I'm not sure that this will ultimately be a sidebar by the time we're all said and done. This might be a pop up or something because mm. you know it, it's useful for you know looking through and deleting and adding new files, right? But it's also going mm -hmm. to be useful for picking. So when you when you come over here and you you click to choose a new file and you say, oh, I don't want to choose a new file. I want to actually look through my media browser. So you choose the media browser. You get a pop up or something that looks like this. You could go through here and say, I need the bike, and then you click the bike, and that will automatically save it to this file field, which will over here mm. will look like, you know, bike.jpg or whatever. And then instead, it'll, mm -hmm. instead of the cat rendering, now it will be the bicycle rendering in this space here. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah? Yeah. Does it seem generally intuitive or are there things there that seem difficult? I'm, I'm a little curious if um, there was like an expandable tab on that, just that left edit pane, mm -hmm. um, that you could just select the photos from there instead of, or the media from there, instead of, um, going to the other, cause I, I don't know if there's, is there a reason to have, to be able to look through the media for any other reason than editing the page or? Um, you might want to do things like bulk upload. So you might have a bunch of f files that you want to use at a future date. So you could say, Hey, my organization just did a photo shoot and we took 500 pictures that are great. We don't know where we're going to use them yet, but we do a lot of blog posts and we want to be able to browse them mm -hmm. at some point in the future. So you might that makes sense. Bulk upload them. And then later, and when you, when you go to the file field, like on an actual page, you say, let me see the media browser. Let me search for that picture. I remember there's a great one where we were all outside near a tree and then you mm -hmm. can find it and then just click and it should upload it. But you're right. The, the disconnect between the two sidebars, that's not super important at this point. Like when you, you should feel like you're, when you're editing the page, you can click and then get a browser. And then you, you know that what you're clicking on is being uploaded to that section. That, that okay. will be um, a more seamless thing at some point. But yeah, I agree. Okay. Having those things closer together is, is good. Yeah. But no, I, I like it. And it's very intuitive and easy to search the, the photos. I think it's really cool how discoverable they are, you know? Yeah, I'm trying to coin that as like a term. I, I don't know if it's the the ultimate term we'll land on, but discoverable CMS is kind of the thing that I'm going for. I, I have mm -hmm. never heard of anything branded that way. And I've also, I haven't seen any projects that are really doing what we're doing, where you're taking a standard output, like a JSON, that can be any kind of JSON. We're not saying, you know, most projects that have JSON backends have specific JSON. They say it has to be structured this way. You have to use these keys and then you have to add these, this structure. We're saying we'll look at any JSON and we're going to try to make sense of it in terms of like an editable interface. So we're discovering whatever you put there and then we're building mm -hmm. something out of it. And the advantage of something like that is, first of all, you don't have to learn any convention. You don't have to say, oh, plenty likes keys this way and structure this way. You can just say, 
uh, this makes sense for my data structure. So I'm going to build a data source that looks like this. And then Plenty will work with that. Also has the advantage when you're pulling from an API. So the, the most frustrating thing for a developer is you can't control somebody else's API. You often have to interact with them. Sometimes APIs are set up horribly. The JSON can be a mess. And this way we can just pull in whatever JSON comes and you can make sense of it that way. So, uh, and you don't have to manipulate. So a lot of times people have to do a, manip a manipulation layer, right? So you're pulling data from an API and then you have to manipulate it to fit in the form that something like a different static site genera generator will be able to read. In our case, we'll read any valid JSON. So you can just pull from the API and we'll read it and we'll give you an editable interface. So um, there's some advantages to it, but I'm trying to make the idea of this discoverable CMS a reality. Um, I think the pitfalls are sometimes you need more control. So you need things like required fields or um, you know select lists or these specific things that can't be discovered very easily. So we're going to have to add a way to to, to add overrides. A good example is a defined list for components. So you have a page that can have five types of components, but you don't want your entire site components on there. You need to be able to set those limits. So that's something that uh, we're going to be working on in the future as well. Yeah, that's that's great. Cool. Well, I, I think this it. was a, a productive conversation. Thanks for humoring me and going through some of this. Hopefully this is helpful for people who are watching at home. And um, yeah, uh, if you don't have anything else, I'll just stop the recording. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks. Thank you.